Um, and to, but at the same time, I, I didn't want to just depend on my memories because sometimes, you know, 30 years later, you know, you may have distorted things. So I, I thought, well, I got to get into the archive, but the time went line was uh, very short. And I also knew that once I got going, I thought I had a lot more to say than the space, which is the you know, case. But I'll talk more about that later. But back in the early 70s, when I first uh, started to, you know, to be kind of evolving into something as a collective. And I think that was a really important term, that we um, started with that idea that artists working as a collective, thinking about 2020, and the things that had come out of the, the problematics within 2020 that they encountered, um, but at the same time recognizing that there was not actually a collective in London after 2020. There was a lot of independent stuff going on, and artists talking to each other and enjoying that exchange, but there wasn't really a defined space again. Uh, we started to uh, consider the potential of the type of spaces that would work, and one of the first things that happened actually was uh, Ray Hassan, who's an artist now in London, and was an artist at that time, but in between went off and did a bunch of things, had a bookstore, and he invited Dave Gordon and myself to um, start doing art programming on the second floor of this space on Dundas Street, which was the Polyglot Bookstore. And so we sort of created, we had this front end gallery, which we call the Polyglot Gallery, just to keep everything simple. Um, but at the same time, it became somewhat confusing because gradually we recognized there was a need for another space and that we would need autonomy from the commercial endeavor that was this bookstore. Although we were all really passionate about the relationship between the bookstore and the gallery idea, and this combination of like space, um, places for artists to gather and to talk was really an important part of how Forest City came into, into existence. So the idea of it as a self-serving space, I question the terminology. I know that Forest City Gallery over the years was accused of a certain amount of elitism because of the way the membership operated in the initial stages, which is particularly because we were defining how Forest City Gallery could function so that the community could know us as artists, could see our work in our own community, because there, that just wasn't happening. So you were having people like Greg Curnow and Murray Favreau and Ron Martin and um, Bob Bozak and other people who were showing nationally, but their work was not being shown to, in, to any degree as it was being produced in London. So this was a real concern. In the heart of London, it happened in the late 60s. It traveled nationally. It was immense amount of dynamics going on with people moving into London, coming here, whether they were writers or musicians or artists, cultural workers in, in many degrees. And also we have to acknowledge as well the way that um, the activism of car back um, came coming out of London with Jack Chambers and the kind of the principal position that was being defined there about artists being paid fees. So that became one of the, the crucial issues as we were formulating, what would be SCG? What would be this first gallery? And uh, it, it was interesting that some of the people who were sort of showing initially with us and encouraging us, that is Dave Gordon and myself, uh, with the Polyglot Gallery, what was Greg Carnot, who, you know, was, you know, anyone who knew Greg knew that he was an incredibly enthusiastic person and would jump in with both feet and, and you know, grab onto that idea. So I would, I would you know, really give a lot of credit to the early um, founders who, you know, for those artists like Robert Holmes and Carrie Flairs in particular and Mary Sass and Mary Pernod, who were really there at the beginning of the formation of the gallery and there was a tremendous amount of debate around that terminology of whether or not we would be a collective or whether we were a cooperative. Or, and there was so much debate about it that in the end, there was a kind of, well, let's just get over the terminology here and let's call ourselves an association. So that's, sometimes in the archive you see this forest and gallery association. And that was really to placate some people who thought to actually say that we were a collective or a cooperative was too radical. So, <laughs> so there were these sort of like elements within us who were saying, well, I don't have an issue with that, I like that. And that's what we're about. We're about uh, artists working for artists, as Carfax was uh, 
defined, and at the same time, we were recognizing the need for other artists to have that opportunity to see our artwork as well, as often, like one thing that a lot of people were not aware of is that the member of the Forest City Gallery who was guaranteed an exhibition, and also we volunteered a heck of a lot and built spaces and raised money and did all of that. So the one thing we got was an exhibition every year. But we could opt out and curate another person into that spot. And that created a tremendous amount of change. <coughs> so you'll see in the archives how, oh, that person wasn't a member then. But a couple years later, that person became a member because their experience actually working with the collective, because I prefer to refer to it as a collective, uh, was so positive that they said, okay, I'd like to be part of that for City Gallery Association. So that's, that's, that was my kind of think on that.